finally arrived here at a Harina Canoe and Kayak Rental. I'm here with the owner, Jim, and we got the Colonel here. <laughs> we are pumped, we are ready to get on the river. It's been great working with Jim, very easy to work with, and if you ever need someone to spot your car and not just be a shuttle service, be sure to give Harina Kayak and Canoe a call. They will drive your vehicle to the destination where you need your car spotted. So, really appreciate that, Jim. Thank you. So, uh, how long have you been in business here at Horina's? 40 years now. What got you started in the kayak canoe business? It was a family-run business. My parents started in 64, I think. Wow. And then I bought it in 1980. Do you have other family members that run it with you? No family members. I got good employees, Zach mm -hmm. and Doug. The pine is a wild and scenic river. Oh, that's right. The yeah. Blue Ribbon Trout Stream. Federal designation, yeah. right? Yeah. It flows okay. through the Manistee National Forest. So where are we at? We're down here. Okay. If we go stay at Seton Creek, you know, we'll drive up this way, stay there. We might go into Mesick and eat. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow morning... May go back and eat Mesick again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we could do that. <laughs> Drop our car truck off here, and then that's where you would be to have you pick it up. This is the one year anniversary, folks, of Colonel's Camp Dome 2. You may recall the first time this tent was used was our through paddle of the Aw Sable River last year. Many fond memories of that through paddle. The maiden night was the thunderstorm. That's right. Maybe throw a piece of that footage at the lightning strike. <laughs> That's a great idea. Hopefully, the old REI tent holds. Jeez, oh my good night. Holy cow. It's two days, that'll be the anniversary. So okay. Can't return the tent. Oh, the one year. I won't be near an Ariata to return it. Get a new one. That's right. The one year return policy is now expired in two days. It's mine. I own it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my trekking poles. That's why I'm not in my duplex right now. So I was forced to put up my Dream Hammock Raven with the Hammock Gear Dyneema tarp. And as you can see under there, I have my single Costco quilt. Colonel tells me tonight's low is possibly 45 degrees. Colonel, I'm going to freeze to death tonight if it comes down to 45 degrees. So will I. <sighs> There'll be two dead Ohio campers. <laughs> Hopefully it stays at least 50 degrees. 55 would be better. Comfortable temperature rating of a single Costco quilt is more like 55 degrees. Oh. I knew I was gonna forget something. You forgot Trekking poles. The double Costco quilt. You know, the rest of the lows, the rest of the week, are in the 50s, so I think we'll be just fine. It is dinner time. We're heading to Misik. It's about a five mile, six mile drive from here. Going to the Buck Snort Bar and Grill. Is that what it's called? The Buck Snort? Let's go. We just finished up eating dinner and I was thinking about setting up my duplex because it's pouring down rain. Even if I didn't get to sleep in it tonight, I really want it on some of the possible campsites on the river. So we went to the local Dollar General and found two brooms. Three dollar brooms. We're gonna fashion some trekking poles out of these. Well, so far this trip has not turned out how we hoped. We knew there was a chance of rain. But the optimistic side of us wanting to get on the river quickly thought, man, it can't be that bad. But the optimistic side of us is sitting in the driver's seat. Then there's the real side of us sitting here that says we should leave Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could have left tomorrow morning, but I was itching to get this vacation started and get on the river, get camping. Ah, got my poles ready to go. 
<laughs> I'm about ready to don the rain jacket and go get this duplex set up. <laughs> We're having a blast. <laughs> the rain has stopped. That's the good news. The bad news is it's 8.15 and we're going to bed. Oh, so early. We're going to wake up at 4 a.m. ready to go kayaking, Colonel. Oh, I know. And it's going to be cold and wet still. <sighs> I'm just glad the rain stopped, but I'm not putting a duplex up now. It's too dark. Oh. The hammock's up, ready to go, so that's where I'm crawling into. You going to stake your tent down tonight, Colonel? No, I'll be laying in it. My body will hold it down. There you go. <laughs> well, here's hoping for better weather tomorrow. It can't be much worse. morning it was a wet one last night we're getting ready to go get breakfast though I must say that it's hard to believe it's day two of our trip and we aren't even near being on the water yet Colonel what do you think about this <laughs> just devastating <laughs> there's supposed to be a nice warm sunny kayak trip I was in my hammock for 12 hours last night <sighs> It's uh, <laughs> stay here all day. It's terrible. <laughs> Good morning, Colonel. <laughs> How did you sleep in the one year anniversary of your I 10? Oh, it's beautiful. It has not lost its luster. Good deal. <laughs> well, I got a hankering from some bacon and eggs and biscuits and gravy. Let's roll. Oh. My poor truck. The Michigan sand has not been nice to it. This thing's only three weeks old. <laughs> Looks like it's been to the ringer. Pretty nice campsite here. Site number nine at Seaton Creek. And just below us down there is a day use area. You can just make out the clearing. A couple picnic tables and a fire ring down there. This is the exact spot that I began my Manistee River paddle two years ago. That is where we plan to put in, right down there. Hopefully, in a couple hours, once the sky's clear. I had the tarp pitched pretty tight last night just because I knew there was gonna be thunderstorms possibly throughout the night. I didn't know if there was gonna be any wind. It wasn't the best night's sleep. For some reason, I tossed and turned quite a bit. But it worked. I prefer to have mine in porch mode, but like I said earlier, I forgot my trekking poles. And today, I am making trekking poles out of broomsticks. I'm not using them for trekking poles, but we'll be using them for either keeping my tarp in porch mode or setting up the duplex. I want to call them granny shorts, but I was looking for more of a daisy dude. <laughs> these are past my knees. 100% poly. And why did you have to buy these? Maybe why not just bring some shorts from home? I did. I think they're in the back of my Polaris Ranger. Oh. So I left them. I just wanted these to sleep in. Okay. So you needed some nice soft sleeping shorts and yeah. you got those at Dollar General. No family dollar. But we went to Dollar General. Dollar General couldn't sell me the shorts I had picked out because they had the stupid security tag on the shorts through the plastic package. <laughs> it just pierced the material and the lady at the counter couldn't get it apart. The little pin that goes into that white plastic yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. what I heard tapping on the counter really loud? Yeah, she I kept hearing this loud there's smack. A, there's a grooved magnet yeah. and she smacks that uh, plastic tab on the magnet it's supposed to release the pen oh and she was just a... <laughs> so i'm sitting <laughs> she was doing these big haymaker blows <laughs> <laughs> so i was out sitting in the truck waiting for colonel and he walks out empty-handed after i helped him pick out the pair of shorts he's gonna buy i was like what the heck so we go to the next door within walking distance 50 yards away was a family dollar and colonel was able to get his sleeping shorts score i will have a much better <sighs> you can't have a better night. The shorts don't make the night. I mean, it's the Nemo pad that makes the night. Yeah, that is true. And the, the Nemo pad and the Philo together. Yep. Wow, what a combination. She's really struggling, but at least we got a little fire going. While well, we're packing up. Oh, we're supposed to be packing? Yes. Oh. I'll, we're gonna be on a river soon, guys. I'll get on that. <laughs> Just about got my hammock broke down. Just gonna try to dry the tarp out a little bit. Colonel is thinking about getting started. Oh, the inside's packed up. I just got the tent, okay. but it's so wet. It just won't stop raining. 
It's not raining, if you're wondering. Colonel's just a pessimist, and I'm an optimist. That is just what the doctor ordered right there. Wow. That is a big serving. What did you say? Pine noodles is like trying to deal with glitter. It just gets everywhere. It's a pretty good analogy. About like sand. Yeah. Michigan sand. We might as well just have a bag of glitter and just put all over our stuff. <laughs> so I got my uh, cooler. But actually, I'm not taking any kind of drinks in my cooler at all. What is in here? Oh, I got one bottle of water. My food bag. This is my Light AF large food bag. Kept in here since I didn't want to bring any kind of drinks of any kind. I figured uh, it would be a good place to store it. I don't think it would leak since it's a uh, Dyneema, but you never know. That's going to ride right there. Camera bag. little Scotty mount for my camera. <clears throat> Morning. How are you doing? How are you? Getting ready, huh? We're getting ready. We're waiting for the sunshine to peek yeah. out. Well, it's supposed to be. Yeah, I think two or four o'clock it's going to be yeah. coming out. So where do you go down? You go down We're going to go right down where you came up. Yep. We'll work our so way down those steps and just go to that little creek there. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's nice. Have fun. All right, thank you. So there's no campground to pay to stay at on this nope. river. I did not put money behind my phone. And at this point, I with it. We have officially begun our two river adventure here at Seton Creek Campground right up the hill there where we stayed last night. This is Seton Creek that flows into the Hoden Pile Dam just up ahead where we have about a quarter mile float across Hoden Pile Dam to the portage, down another set of stairs, across the parking lot into the Big Manistee River. The sunshine is finally trying to make an appearance Getting ready to exit Seton Creek into the Hoden Pile Dam just up ahead here. And back in 2018, this is where I did a couple backflips on the rope swing. It's a little too chilly today. I'm not interested in doing it today, but there was a family hanging out there that day when I did this uh, Manistee River trail and kayak. And I stopped and showed these kids how to do a couple backflips there. I will put that video up in the cards if you're interested in seeing that video. We are officially in Terrain Hoden Pile Dam in our portage straight ahead. Zoom in a little bit here. There's the actual hydroelectric power plant, I guess it would be called. And about 100 yards to the right is our portage right there in the middle of your screen. Now that you've had lots of practice, it's rolling. Let's step right out, piece of cake. It's only three foot deep here. That's like six feet, five feet. Three and a half. Watch my backpack go. <laughs> it's not strapped in. <laughs> Let's walk by the steep section into the grass. What's that? I'm gonna walk up this grass, it's a little, not steep. I thought you might go down the grass.
Well, we just made it down our one and only portage for this entire trip, right? I think so, yeah. Woohoo! Can't beat that. There's the colonel, he made it. And right over there at the bathroom is where we put in down another set of steps, then put in to the Manistee River. Colonel, what do you think, man? Look at the sunshine's coming out. Look at me squinting. I can't even see. It's nice and warm out. It's it feels like 70, but in reality it's probably only 65. But it feels kind of hot right now. Yeah, it's nice. This is what we've been waiting for. It's time to get on the river and get this trip started. There it is, the beginning of the Big Manistee River below Houghton Pile Dam. And it looks like it's moving very swiftly. I love it. We are officially off on the Big Manistee River, just below the Houghton Pile Dam, and I see some blue sky overhead. Not sure if the camera's picking that up, but it's slowly but surely clearing up, and we're gonna have some great weather tonight and tomorrow and the next day for sure. Today was a little iffy. We knew that coming in. We took our chances. We kind of paid the price overnight and this morning, but looks like it's gonna be good from here on out. First initial impressions, Turtle, of the Big Manistee River. Beautiful. Nice, swift, clean. Hope it maintains its pace. Yeah. The sun is really out now. It's still partly cloudy, but it, is, it has really warmed up. So much so, I'm getting my late summer tan. Looked at my Garmin a few minutes ago. We were averaging about 3.8 miles an hour with hardly any work at all. Basically just paddling to stay straight. And in a couple swift areas, we got up to five mile an hour. Pretty nice, Colonel. <laughs> Colonel keeps getting spun around. A little breezy coming out of the west. Well, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon and things are going great. The sun has been coming and going. It's kind of out right now. Actually, it's out really well right now, but the breeze is still a little chilly, almost making me put my shirt back on, but, oh, you didn't get me this time. I was ready. No, I wasn't ready. It just, um, I'm so immune to it now. We think we have two or three more miles to the campsite that I am looking for. We have passed many, many decent sites. Not perfect, but very nice. Some of them actually had a pile of firewood next to them. But it's, you know, it's only two o'clock, so we're hoping to get another hour or two down river and set up camp and have a late lunch, early supper. Well, we have arrived to where I camped out right over there but it's occupied so the next best spot is right across the river right here and these trees i don't know what kind of trees these are let's go check it out not bad some seats nice fire ring some left behind firewood not much A little roly poly in here for tents, but not bad. I wanted to be on the other side of the river. I can't go trail running over here. Aww. Well, I think we're gonna push on a little further. It is a great campsite in there. However, it's cold and damp and dark. Out here in the sunlight, it feels great, but man, we got these uh, face gnats all over. Colonel and I have decided to push on. It's only 2.30, so. We are gonna ask the people at the next site where I wanted to go if they're gonna be there all day. Because if they're getting ready to pack up and leave, you know, we'll wait around and we'll take it when they go. 
But if they're not and they're staying another night, we're gonna push on down the river and take our chances and see if we can find another good site. Potential campsite on the left. River left. What do we have up here? Another beautiful potential campsite. Can't wait to check it out. It's our only night on the Manistee River. So I wanna make sure we don't settle for just any campsite. I want one that's out of the wind, has a view of the sunset maybe, and possibly some firewood and just a beautiful campsite in general. We're gonna keep looking. <laughs> All right, we're kind of torn on where to camp at. We like this site because we have water on both sides of this little jut out of land. There's some nice grassy areas to set up camp. We don't want to go up in the dark woods. There's a nice campsite up there, but I don't really want to camp in a damp, dark woods when it's kind of chilly out. Okay, I just did a little trail run down river about a quarter mile, almost a half mile, probably a quarter and a half, and I passed eight more campsites. And the last one, the last two I came to, beat this one i think so i'm trying to talk to colonel not really trying to talk to colonel into it i just want to make the right decision i should have took pictures of it so we can show him and make a uh, wiser decision what do you think colonel um as long as i got the noise of the river yeah and okay forced into the woods i guess we have some beautiful river sound going on right here oh this takeout's a lot easier though yeah this is a nice takeout the other yeah, one has getting in in the morning when it's cold the it's other one has nice shallow gravel about like it is right here six inches deep four inches deep if we go down there there ain't coming back that's the other problem we do have I should have took options. pictures i don't know if i want to jog down here again just to take pictures for the colonel we got wood options here well there's a whole woods there too okay well we decided to stay here at our first spot mainly due to the easy in and out and access to water good for swimming Good for getting water for cooking, cleaning up. Here are my two broomsticks I bought at Dollar General last night. They are going to take the place of my trekking poles for my duplex. Let's get it set up. All right, I got the four corners of the duplex staked out. Got my broomstick handle that is 48 inches. I know it's a little long, but what I did is I gave a lot of slack on all four corners on the pullouts. So I have more room and flexibility to pull up the bathtub really steep, you know, because of the longer pull I'm using. But I can always dig this into the ground, make a little hole to sink it down in there a couple inches. Let's see how this works. Hey, look at that, Colonel. Boy, it's not bad. Bad. pulling up very tall at all. Yeah, it's not it? bad. That's almost perfect. I'm gonna Wait. push it into the ground. A couple inches and it's good to go. Wow, you didn't even try to screw it in? No. I think it's going to work. Not bad. The broomsticks worked perfectly. I can't even tell. They're not trekking poles. Yes, very happy. The colonel's just about got his dome tent set up. Unfortunately, he's a little close for my liking tonight. I don't know how I'm going to deal with the snoring, but I will admit the snoring has been much better as of late. Now that he's in the Nemo air pad with the Nemo Philo pillow, he's been sleeping like a baby for many, many hours each night, and there's only slight snoring intermittently. So I think I can handle that. I got your plugs if it gets bad. I might just start hiking with broomsticks, Colonel. <laughs> oh, I think we made the right decision staying here at this site. Oh yeah, it's working out. I mean, this site further down river that I told you about is pretty nice, and I'm sure we would have been happy there as well. But you know, this is hard to beat. Yeah. We got to enjoy the sun this afternoon, the beautiful sound of the river down there. That is just lovely. I didn't think we were going to see the sun at all. <laughs> yeah. Sure took it sweet time. I can definitely feel it cooling off now. Yeah. And it's nice being out of the woods out here on this little peninsula. Is that what you call it? Yeah. This little grassy area where we have our tents set up. Um, more exposed right now, but it was warmer this afternoon. Better to be in that dark, cold, damp woods. Well, let's bring this drone down and get a fire started, Colonel. 
Good idea. <laughs> So for dinner tonight, I am trying good to go pad thai, and it is delish. I watched a couple videos on these meals, and I actually found one where someone taste tested all the different options of good to go. It was like a dozen or so, and pad thai made his top three. But I want to thank Justin from It's Good in the Woods for turning me on to these good to go meals. And because of this, it is good on the water. <laughs> Colonel, what you having for supper tonight? I had those two wraps and a late lunch. I might be good. All right. Well, it's about 6.30. Sun has went down over that hill. And it's about time to get a fire started. <laughs> Colonel is ready for the cold tomorrow morning. I can't believe all this stuff looks this nice on me. It does look good. It, yeah. It looks like you're ready to take on a 30 degree hailstorm. Tomorrow in a kayak. <laughs> 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 Getting ready to have some tea next to our nice warm fire. Riverside. <laughs> Had a great first day on the Big Manistee River. Probably only made it about eight or nine, ten miles down river. But the weather turned out to be fantastic. Tomorrow, if Colonel survives, we will be on the river bright and early. Now, actually, we're going to sleep in as late as we can because we only got four to six miles to make it down to Tippy Dam Pond. And my truck is waiting for us down there. And we can either camp out one more night on Tippy Dam or we can hop in our truck and head on up to the Pine River, which is what I think we're going to do. We're ready to get on the Pine River. It's about a 55 mile float, a through paddle, and it is fast water, shallow, narrow. It's gonna be fun. So, not that the Manistee isn't fun, it's just we are gonna have a whole day to burn tomorrow, so we might as well get moving and get on the Pine where we're gonna be for a majority of this trip. So, it's calm and comfortable. The sky is clearing. It's gonna get down into the upper 40s, I believe, and Hopefully, Colonel will survive with his new 40 degree quilt. 30 degree quilt. 30 degree quilt. Okay, that's better yet. He'll survive. With the 40, that's iffy. Yeah. 30 degree. <laughs> you got to sleep in your frog togs, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready for morning already. Oh, well, yeah. I just had to make sure they fit. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys in the morning. best part of waking up is a little death wish in your cup. The best part of waking up some death wish in your cup. All right, here we go. My first taste of death wish in your cup. <laughs> Woo! Tastes like death. <laughs> That's a man's coffee. <laughs> That's a man's coffee for sure. Wow. I haven't had a mountain house since we surprised you on the Chantilly Trace. Is that right? I don't know if I've had a breakfast skillet since I floated the Manistee in 2018. Where's that sunshine? Oh, there it is. Oh, hey, wow. <laughs> Surprise, surprise wow that's gonna be oh yeah no that thing's gonna be blazing today it looks like a moon right now wow that's beautiful I never yeah you can look right at it and it doesn't burn your retinas Dang out that. look at that ball of orange has huh. seen. i haven't seen a sun look like that in a long time it looks like a bright moon yeah really bizarre that's a uh, maybe that's a sign for a really hot hazy hot day yeah it's a rope swinging sun. That's a rope swinging sun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, 
I like my mountain house shaken, not stirred. That's an unbeatable combination right there. Coffee, breakfast skillet, fire along the lovely river. Just about packed up here at camp. Getting ready to hop on the river here in a few moments. Heading down to Red Bridge and into the backwaters of Tippy Dam. We only got like five miles to go. Hopefully we get a signal between here and there so we can get a hold of Jim at Harina Kayak and Canoe Livery so he can so we can make sure our truck is at Norman's Landing because I think we're going to skip staying tonight in Tippy Dam and hop in our truck and head on up to the Pine River and get that trip started. We're both really looking forward to getting on the Pine River. So looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day. Another beautiful day on the Big Manistee River. Pretty clear sky today, Colonel. They finally got the forecast right for a change. Oh, beautiful sunshine, no drizzle. This is great. It's a little on the chilly side right now. What do you think, about 60? Probably. Yeah. But when you're paddling with no wind, a t-shirt's all you need. Shallow right here. Yeah, it is. So we were just having a little discussion about what we like and dislike about the Manistee River, the big Manistee River, and comparing it to the Osable since, since that was our last through paddle. And this reminds us a lot of the wild scenic section, I think is what it's called or designated as on the Osable where there's no houses and it was fast moving water about four miles an hour and just beauty all around you. That's the way this entire 14, 13, 14 mile stretch is from Houghton Pile Dam down to Red Bridge. But like the Colonel said, it is nice to occasionally see some houses or cabins, you know. Just random houses. Yeah, not, random houses. Not like a little village. Yeah, not, and not for very long, you know. Out here, you're in in nature you're completely immersed in nature and there's nothing to spoil it except campsites that's another thing if you're looking for great camping unlimited options along here yes the manistee river trail a quarter mile that way off the river is full of great camping probably 30 you know there's like three options at every designated camping area that has a fire ring but when you're not along the trail and you're just on the edge of the river bank there's campsites everywhere i'm guessing there's 50 to 100 camping options along the Manistee River, just in this 14 mile stretch. Unbelievable camping. Anything to add to that, Colonel? That it's river left and the NCT is river right. <laughs> yes, river <laughs> left to the MRT, river right to the NCT. I prefer to be in this unspoiled beauty and not be going by houses, but we were just saying that it's nice to every now and then mix it up with a random house or houses just for a, a short time, but then you want to be right back into the beauty, and that's what this river offers. The Asabel, you just have too many stretches of slow periods of water, too many ponds, not as many camping options, but quite a few. Yeah, I don't think we struggled, did we? No. It truly was the lucky Indian that got the paddle to Manistee before the Asabel. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what the Asabel is like before all the man-made dam ponds. That's true. That might have been the river. White might have. screw up river. <laughs> this may be the highest sand dune or river bank, whatever you want to call it, that we've seen on the river thus far. About 100 foot. Got a campsite way up ahead on the top of that hill in the pines. You can barely see it. There, now you can see it good. Awesome. Peace and serenity is all I can say. Wow. It's so nice to have some peace and quiet without the Colonel for a change. We just went under the red bridge, take out 
few minutes ago and we are in the backwaters of Tippy Dam, just about officially in Tippy Dam. Still a little bit of flow, but not much, but I can feel that warm sunshine. Oh, buddy. Having no wind makes it so much better. Just spoke with Jim Horina, our uh, car spotter, a few moments ago, and our truck was moved last night, so we are good to go to get to our truck and head back to his place to arrange the next segment of our trip to the Pine River. Can I get a woohoo? Up ahead there looks like an awesome camping area. I think I'm gonna stop and check it out. Even though we aren't camping here, and it's nice to know for future reference. Oh, nice. Good hanging spots, good tent spots. A little leftover firewood, nice fire pit. Lots of room for lots of camping here. Beautiful view up here too, Colonel. This is the first camping site, designated camping site, I've seen since uh, the Red Bridge, about a half mile that way. All right, back in the boat, on to the next one. This is the prettiest damn pond I've ever seen. <laughs> we have no wind. The little breeze that we do have is helping us through this pond. And it's just so tranquil. This is lovely. My campsite senses are tingling. We must be near something epic. What is this? Another beautiful campsite. Let's go check it out. This campsite looks awesome. I would love to stay here. Oh man. Yes, there is a table on this campsite. Man, this is awesome. It's an ultralight table. A two-tiered table. That is cool. We don't see that every day. It's a little lumpy for some tents, but not bad. A little muddy. Wow. Probably more camping back in there. Very nice. I don't see any designated campsite signs where you can register to reserve this one. So, unless it's on the other side of the island, it's almost like this is a little island. So I think this is a stealth campsite, but it is awesome. Another nice campsite right up there. But it's a beauty. And another one right up ahead here. I think I might hop out and take a look at that one. Eh, yeah. I don't really like this one. Site number 19. Another designated camping area right up here on this point. I saw the post. You can just see the post up there on the point. Looks like a pretty good one. And a lot of these government landing campsites have access to drive, because there's one with a camper right there. And there's one right over there. There's a person walking with their dog. I saw a picnic table and a little pole for hanging your food bag. We are approaching Government Island. There are two designated spots on Government Island. But we are now in search of a place to stop and cook some lunch. It's high noon. So over here on this government landing, I don't know what site numbers they are, but this is pretty cool. So in reference to Government Island, which is right in front of the Colonel, over here is another government landing campsite area. I can see a red tent, a tent camping area over there with a camper, a boat ramp, 
another camper right there with a boater boat. And you can drive, obviously, to those sites. Man, I'd love to come back and stay here for a week. Now that is a nice sight up there. A little bit of work to get up there. A beautiful view overlooking Tippy Dam Pond amongst the pines. Pretty nice. So this is Government Island. Directly across from Government Island behind a the kernel there is another site. I see a picnic table and a sign up there on top of that little sand dune entrance. I hear people talking up there. Many of these you can drive to. My gosh, Colonel, this is just awesome camping. Yep. You're going to drive up here and camp with Kristen, aren't you? I might. All as I know is this area is so much better than the Osable River area. Yeah. As far as peaceful, quiet, tranquility, no houses and crowds. Just found us another campsite here. It's a non-designated campsite, but still very beautiful. Sometimes the non-designated sites are the best, Colonel. That's true. True story. I like how it's on a point right here. You got water and views on both sides of your camp. Oh, it's so nice. Nice sitting log. Probably plenty of firewood back there. That was bizarre. Pretty amazing view for a snack break. I could definitely see myself camping here, Colonel. Mm -hmm. Definitely quiet though. Colonel likes to have a little river noise. Well, this is a lake. With a river flowing in and out though. Mm -hmm. That means it's a damn pond. <clears throat> it also means you could hear Bigfoot. That's true. My goodness. Do we have to leave? <laughs> no. Another beautiful campsite, folks. There's two camping sites. Colonel's getting excited. There's two camping sites, one for me, one for you. Two campsites. If you have a snoring partner, you can stay, one can stay here and the other can stay over there. Site number 31. It's a beauty. This campsite is amazing. There's a standalone table up here. It looks like it's stained and varnished. I know. That is nice. It's like shaped like a it's an octagon table. A chair. A nice fire pit with a grill rack attached to it. Wow. Look at the view from this site. Oh, this would be perfect. And a rope swing. Oh, there is not. Right here. Colonel found a rope swing. Is this like number 10 we found? Probably. <laughs> hey, my fingerprints aren't on any of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is designated site number 32. Government Landing 32 in Tippy Dam Pond. If you are camping with a large group of people, site 31 and 32 back here would be absolutely perfect. And you can even spread out. There is site 31, 32, and right across the pond, another site there, and there where that pontoon boat just pulled out. Sites everywhere. Man, that is an awesome site. Comes with a little rope swing. Right on the point with a view on both sides. I am so impressed with the camping options on this pond. I do believe we are on the home stretch, folks, to Norton's Landing. I see some kind of structure up ahead, and I believe that is the boat ramp area that we are heading to where my truck is.
Leg one of the journey is over. Woohoo! Woo! Well, we have completed the first leg of our adventure up here in Northern Michigan on the Big Manistee River. We are all loaded up and on our way back to Harina Canoe and Kayak Delivery to get directions from Jim to the headwaters, of, well, I don't know if it's the headwaters, the very beginning of the Pine River. So, had a fantastic time on the Big Manistee River. Some of the best campsites I have ever seen, especially Tippy Dam Pond. Man. Yeah, those were nice. A lot of them were nice. You yeah. could spend weeks there just camping. You could. Yeah, I definitely want to come back. I would highly recommend the Manistee River, especially from Hoden Pile Dam down to the Red Bridge. And then if you have the time going into Tippy Dam, the camping is just phenomenal. I can't say enough about it. I will definitely be back. Colonel, any final words? Yeah, same here. I'll definitely be back. Um, great views, clean water. Yep. You know, what more could you want? Right. Firewood? Cut, cut and delivered firewood. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, guys. Thanks for joining us on our big Manistee River adventure on our way to the Pine River. Hope to see you again real soon. Until next time, I'm Jason Wish. This is the Colonel wishing you a great time on your next adventure. <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs>